word ecclesia, from which we get our word church, is translated and appears 115 times in the New Testament. The Greek word comes from the Greek ek, meaning out of, and kaleo, meaning to call. The word church, then, means the called out, but called out of what and to what? The call, dear friends, is to come out of the world and be aligned with Jesus Christ and His people. Paul argued that we must not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. He then pled with the Corinthians, Come out from among them, and be separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 17 and 18. Do you remember these words from our Lord's Sermon on the Mount? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Matthew 6, 24. The word church is used in two distinct ways in the New Testament. Paul and other Bible writers use the word of churches located in various cities and communities in the ancient world. Paul introduced his first letter to the Corinthians with these words. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes our brother, under the church of God which is at Corinth, to them who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both theirs and ours. 1 Corinthians 1, 1 and 2. Jesus Himself wrote seven letters to churches in Asia Minor, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea, all local churches in the cities listed. The word church is also used of all obedient children of God who live in the Christian era. When Jesus said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Upon this rock I will build my church, Matthew 16, 18, He was not speaking of any local congregation. He was speaking of every faithful church from the beginning of the church on the day of Pentecost to the end of the world. Please listen to Paul's use of the word church in the reading from Ephesians 5. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave Himself for it. According to these verses, Christ is the head of the church and the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself up for it, that He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word, that He might present it to Himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Ephesians 5, 23-27. Is anyone so naive that he thinks Christ gave Himself for some local church. He gave Himself for all those who come unto Him by faith and obedience to His Word. I have a question I urge you to consider prayerfully. Is the church of the New Testament a denomination? The church is not and cannot be a denomination. No denomination claims to include all of God's children, but the church of the New Testament does. But denominations claim to be larger than any local church. Denominations cannot qualify for the church of the New Testament. It is too large to be a local church and too small to be the universal church. Denominations, my friends, are human inventions. They cannot be justified from the inspired Word of Almighty God. They need to be disbanded. All people must come to Christ and be members only of the church of our Lord which was established on the day of Pentecost. If you are not a member of the body of Christ, will you not confess your faith in Christ and be baptized into His church this very day? Thank you, and may God bless you.